Thanksgiving legend is simple enough. It says, if the bears become selfish and greedy and unkind to the needy and insufficiently thankful for nature's great bounty, that monster of monsters, Big Paul, would come and gobble up bear country county by county. Big Paul! Welcome to Deep in Bear Country, a Berenstain Bearcast. I'm your host, Phil Gonzalez, and thank you for joining us for this big, big, big Thanksgiving special. A special so big that I have two very good friends here to uh, help me get through it. Why don't you guys go ahead and reintroduce yourselves to our listeners? Hi, I'm Brad Mariska, and I'm a Berenstain Bear collector from Austin, Minnesota. And I'm Jeremy Gloff, and I'm a Berenstain Bear collector from Tampa, Florida. And you guys... All probably remember Brad and Jeremy from our collectors episode, and they are here to uh, walk us through the Berenstain Bears Meet Big Paw from 1980. Now, is this a book, guys? Well, it it started out as a television special. It was the second animated special on NBC that featured the Berenstain Bears. Right, and we covered. Uh, the Berenstain Bear is a Christmas tree, which was the first special. We didn't cover the special yet. We actually covered the uh, the the book of the special. But this time we're going to jump right in and talk about the animated special because this thing is a delight. It's uh, amazing and it's very bizarre in a lot of ways. That is absolutely true. It's a, it's a little bit scary maybe for the for the little ones. Yeah, it's a little bit spooky. <laughs> it's kind of scary for I never saw it until today, so. <laughs> I was like, whoa, this is kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it introduces a lot of elements to the bear universe that I think uh, are going to be kind of unique to the animated specials and then like the like the mid-80s television series. Yeah, stuff that doesn't really latch on in the books, but really holds on in the animation. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, let's let's get talking about this special. Uh, Stan and Jan Berenstain, uh, just like the first special, they wrote it. Yes. <laughs> Uh, this is one of those specials that uh, they went to uh, NBC and said, you know, we're really wanting to get into the market. The Berenstain Bears franchise was really taking off in the late 70s, and they saw an opportunity. They saw that, you know, all of these other children's books series um, are getting these holiday specials. And they were able to convince some producers to first make the Christmas special in 1979, but it was the first of a five series deal and a Thanksgiving special was the second one to come along. Right. And there were a lot of like children's properties and family properties that were getting specials in the, in the mid to late seventies. This is around the same time we had like the family circus specials coming out, right? Yeah. And and it's easy to forget in the 21st century with all of the media opportunities with, with cable and now all the television shows that are being released on sites like Netflix and Amazon that, um, it was a very crowded marketplace. It, you had to have a very successful property to get an evening special because there were only three major networks. What's really, what struck me when I first, and I haven't seen this since I was a tiny little kid, prob- maybe since it first aired. I don't know. Like, I think I was around four years old when I saw it, uh, but I remember seeing it. Uh, it's, it has a very different vibe than the Berenstain Bears books. Um, it, a very different vibe from the uh, the Christmas special. Uh, it really, mm-hmm. it, it's really kind of a set. It's up a. It's more of an adventure story. It's more of a like a just a like an episode of a TV show. Yeah, I feel like this this special came out of the tradition of uh, the Bear Scouts, the first uh, sort of what I call adventure book from the beginner book series, where the kids go out and um, usually in those. Uh, uh, books, Papa gets into trouble and the kids save him. And that's kind of what happens here is that um, <laughs> Papa goes and like flies off the handle and overreacts. And it's actually the kids who who save him again in a, in a roundabout way. What's really telling, as soon as the special opens, the first real image you get is Mama Bear in the kitchen performing some sort of witchcraft. <laughs> yes. I know. I saw that. And I'm like, this is like the occult. Like, right. This right. is very, very strange. I mean, especially in light of the fact that in the past 
10 or 15 years, the Berenstain Bears series has become very Christian oriented. Yes. Um, like this is absolutely the occult. I mean, <laughs> she is like reading uh, this. She puts this flower in a frying pan and she she is able to uh, uh, re- see the sign of this impending doom and how everyone in bear country is is uh is is going to meet a deadly fate at the hands of this mysterious big paw. <laughs> I was hooked from the from the second I saw that because I always collected the books but never saw the cartoons. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, I watched it so I could talk. And seeing that, I'm like, this is completely different than anything I've ever seen in the books. And I loved it actually. <laughs> and what I love about it is that it immediately says this is a a separate like timeline, like this right. is a different bear country. Like it. It's a it's the cartoon world, not the book world. The bears behave differently. Uh, they they are, they have a different relationship to their to their city, to their environment, uh, mm-hmm. to the citizens of bear country. It's it's much more volatile. It's much more almost like just it's much more earthy. I think I think that really speaks to the fact we uh, you know this special isn't it's a Thanksgiving special, but it's not really that much about Thanksgiving. <laughs> And I think they were trying to reach out to maybe a larger audience and yeah. and to react to sort of the commercialism or American excess that that they were saying, you know, the reason that Big Paul was going to come back and destroy everything in bear country is because people weren't appreciating each other and the simple things and they were taking advantage of, of others and becoming very selfish. And then you get into like the herd mentality later. There's yeah. a lot of sociology in this. Oh, it's, oh yeah. Like it's yeah, this whole beauty and the beast like pitchfork mob that's going to go and get Big Paw. It's yeah. so timely right now, actually. It's interesting. I was yeah. just going to say that. I want to get to that when we get to the to near the end of the, of, the, of the special. But my first big question is, so Mama performs her divination. And yep. she's like, <laughs> because we've all become so greedy, Big Paw is going to return and gobble up bear ca- country, county by county. And they've all heard of this legend. Like, pa, Papa reacts very viscerally to the name Big Paw. So because, spoilers, Big Paw ends up being a real character, like he actually shows up. But this is an old legend, apparently. Like, everyone knows this story. Mm. Like, how far back does this go? Right. And everyone not only knows the story, but uh, has an opinion on it. Yeah. Because Papa is very firm about, no, 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 this is, you know. You know, this is all nonsense or whatever. Um, yet, yet of course, when it turns out that Big Paw is real, he's the first one to, without uh, qu- any sort of questioning, to just react violently to Big Paw. Oh. I, I mean, I could, I could speculate as to my assumed, you know, uh, political leanings of Papa, but I, I won't go there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we. Uh... We learned from their rhyme that apparently Bear Country, at least the television version of Bear Country, is divided into counties, something we've never mm-hmm. known before. And then we are introduced to a series of animal friends who witness the arrival of Big Paw. We uh, we learn a few phrases. They refer to uh, Bear... Oh, yeah, because there's something weird. Uh, it cuts to its first commercial break right after like the intro. And when it comes mm-hmm. back, the narration sort of reintroduces us to the plot. In case you stepped in after the initial <laughs> intro, and it refers to the Great Grizzly Race. And oh, yeah. already in this special, we've got Bear Country Legend, we've got Bear Country Magic, and <laughs> a sense that this is like an old, like, grizzly bears are a race of bears. I don't know. I just I like that this, this television specials are kind of building their own sociology. Well, and I think I, I love reading into this because you think about the first Thanksgiving and how oh, it yeah. was, you know, the European race and yep. the Native American race. And they were meeting for the first time. And I love how they phrase some of the things in this special, like in this very sort of mythological, historical uh, uh, context where not overtly, but on the on the subtext, there's there's sort of you know this us versus them, and you know that in the end everyone is going to come together and like have a big meal, but you don't know how it's going to all right. resolve itself. And you're not quite expecting things to get so dire and life threatening. Because it really does get dire and life threatening there at the end. 
<laughs> yeah, so it gets really dark. I mean, like they I mean, like they that mob is is violent. They are gonna kill Big Pop. <laughs> and we also realize that Bear Country has kind of become a horrible place where everyone's keeping all their property behind like padlocks, chains, <laughs> massive like Papa Bear and the kids walk through like what seems to be just a, a street that's lined with high fences with keep out <laughs> signs. Uh, yeah, it's it's very dystopian. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's kind of a sad place. Mm -hmm. They're all bloodthirsty. They all yes. bloodthirsty. They all want they all want you to keep your hands off their pumpkins. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the, the the food is alive in this version of Bear Country. Yep. Oh yeah, the grapes are alive. The tomatoes are alive. It's it's a completely it's a it's a very it's a very different image of Bear Country than we even got in the Christmas special because at the end of that everyone seemed to be like very joyous and giving. And celebrating happiness and light. And then all of a sudden, come a year later, Bear Country's back to its old ways. <laughs> um, so Mama, they, they talk about Mama a little bit. Uh, she talks, she's talking about all the stuff she's thankful for. And at one point it says she was even thankful for old Papa Bear. And Mama Bear dusts Papa Bear's photograph on the mantle. And it says she's thankful for Papa Bear. And she makes this horrible face. <laughs> at the camera and coupling that with the fact that earlier in the episode when she's divining with her magic honeypot she says one of the things that might be in her future is quote a handsome stranger it makes me wonder just how satisfied <laughs> I, uh, I guess I didn't even catch that line you know, I, I, I don't remember that like, line that's that's I don't even know what to think of that see I definitely need to go back and watch this again and it's, <laughs> it's worth a second watch I mean like it was so good how unsatisfied is television mama bear she sings a song i want to say that the songs in this are very catchy they're very timely like there's the 70s synthesizer <laughs> yeah it's uh, very like hipster sounding almost there's a lot of good slapstick there was slapstick in the first special that i didn't feel really sat well with the story they were telling but you get a lot of good physical comedy in this one that i think fits the the energy of the special a lot better especially when the hedgehog is doing semaphore to spell out the name big paw Right. Yes. Like I really like. There it. is not a dull moment in your right. show. Yeah, the energy is just just nonstop. And in the song that Big Paw sings, there's some big word he uses. I can't remember what it was. Oh, he says, "Uh, he's talking." He's not about Sasquatch. Sasquatch, abominable snowman. What does he say? He says those guys are. There's just some word. I'm like, this yeah. is a big word for a children's TV special. That's Stan Berenstain showing off his college education. So there's this, uh. So the, the hedgehog shows up and tells everyone that Big Paw's coming and the Papa Bear gets the residents of Bear Country just whipped up into a frenzy. They're they're terrified of this bear. Papa Bear is basically, like we said, plays the role of Gaston. He he scares them into thinking this thing is gonna come and destroy their town. But meanwhile, the kids have separated from Papa Bear. They've gone to the sinister bog to find <laughs> mixed nuts from the mixed nut tree. Uh, which is apparently a thing in bear country. I love the sinister bog. The sinister <laughs> bog, the mixed nut tree, which is a weird thing to have. Um, and Big Paw himself, Big Paw, when he first shows up, is literally like 50 feet tall. Right. Mm -hmm. Like he picks up the bear. So he the, the, the cubs fall out of the tree and he saves them. And then he picks up their basket and it is basically the size of his fingernail. Right. Yeah. Like he's enormous. They both fit in one hand. Like the cubs fit in the palm of his hand when they fall. Showing, of course, to the audience that he's not a bad guy. He's just big. He sings, like you say, he sings a wonderful song. If, if if any of the listeners have never heard this song before, it's it's genius. But it's also can be really scary if you're seeing this as a small kid. Yeah, I'm looking at the YouTube comments, and every, there's all these comments like this scared me when I was a kid. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pop's gonna rear our peas. He's not so really delicious. You can have your Sasquatch. You're a bug. Here comes that line. Here it is. Yep. My name is Big Pong. I super seed. Yeah, super seed. That's it. That's it. One thing I like to do is to show them. 
And when night is fine, so make sure that find a player and rip men for the I mean, it's just like, it's a really island. Yes. <laughs> See, and me as a musician, all I hear are like timpani and the French horns <laughs> and the, the minor key. And I just, I just, I love it. I was saying as like an electronic musician, when I heard that synthesizer, I'm like, this is so cool. <laughs> well, and that's especially in the song that follows with the one that Mamba sings about how a stranger is just somebody that you you don't know yet, which is also a very dangerous phrase to tell a kid. Yeah, especially since it's like Baron St. Bear's uh, the Don't Talk to Strangers comes out like it just a right. matter of years. Like the next year. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it was like direct response to meet Big Bob because all of yeah. a sudden these kids were going out like talking to strangers. 50 foot tall bears. I will say that in the midst, in the middle of Big Paw's introductory song, there's actually a short guitar solo that Big Paw plays on his like loot or whatever it is he's right yeah it's like a loot but he also uses it as a club it is a yeah. thick piece of wood but he props his foot up and just plays a little bit i was like yeah they, they don't you would never see that in a cartoon now no is that yeah. the same thing that he has on the cover of the activity book yes the loot yeah yep yeah he's uh he sort of seems to be this like throwback like this guy has probably just been wandering around since like the mid 60s <laughs> just hanging out living off the land he grew his hair extra long so he could get rid of his clothes. He's just this sort of like ultra big hippie. Yeah, he's just misunderstood. Yeah. He's kind of like the Beast in Beauty and the Beast. He's a he's not the Grinch, but the whole plot line and the storyline, the 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 relationship between this ostracized unknown and the the community is very much Grinch esque. And uh, he's also an extension of uh, of Great Natural Bear from the Almanac. Yes. Uh, they acknowledge yes. that he's basically the same character. Correct. Yeah, the Berenstains have said that that's uh, that's where he came from. Yeah, there's a lot of Grinch in this episode and this special. There's also a lot of like sort of a lot of there's the Great Pumpkin in the sense that there's this like legend and it's kind of a spooky atmosphere and the kids are like in the dark. There's a little bit of like the like Doctor Seussian like the Butter Battle book, like when it comes to like stories about conflict and conflict resolution. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a general kind of mishmash of, of, of ideas. So what happens is Papa uh, is going to lead this army of bear country people against Big Paul when the uh, when the kids show up and then Mama sings a song about a stranger. <laughs> it's basically like the uh, the 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 uh, the song from the Simpsons. Oh, streetcar. A stranger is just a yeah. you haven't met. But she yeah, this been... song is this song is totally from. The 70s. Oh, yeah. And what I love about it is this, this special came out in 1980, but the, the music uh, that was written by Elliot Lawrence in this situation is definitely about five years behind the curve. Uh, a stranger's just somebody you don't already know. He could be a friend. Who is that kind of friend? Who needs a phone? <laughs> he could be a friend. He could be a schmo, or just a regular <laughs> sort of a joke. <laughs> a stranger's just somebody whom you haven't yet met. So don't make a fuss. It's not etiquette. So come on, get set, and try not to forget. A stranger's just somebody whom you haven't yet met. I feel like I'm watching a musical from the mid '70s. I was like, gonna say, yes, I wouldn't be surprised. Pippin to hear, like, or a chorus line. I wouldn't or, be surprised or... to hear like B. Arthur singing this on like the Donnie and Marie show. Oh yeah, yes. absolutely. Like doing a little <laughs> soft shoe across the stage. It's been rehearsed about three times. <laughs> no, it's great. Uh... So she convinces the Bears through her song to try diplomacy because they don't really know what his deal is. He hasn't done anything. So Papa and the kids go up to confront him. But Papa mistakes his yawns for roars and his shadow for his size and his fire for his fire breath. So Papa rolls down the down the mountain because Big Paul's on the top of the mountain. Papa rolls back into town and says... This guy's dangerous. We've got to take him out. And they get weapons. Like, they do. And actually, the book. So in the in the adaptation, uh, when they made it into the Berenstain Bears Thanksgiving in 1989, uh, or no, 1997, excuse me, this is one of the best 
pages in the book. Um, and I just want to, they, they adapted the text very, very nicely. And it really kind of makes you think. And it says, swords were unsheathed, bugles were blown. They were no longer bears with minds of their own. They were no longer Jack and Jill, Betty and Bob. The bears had become a dangerous mob. With the false courage of numbers to the mountain they went with an arsenal of weapons and deadly intent. Speaking of, you know, how, how, how we were talking about sort of this folk, folk pop sound of that song that Mama just sang. Um, you know, there's that, that song from, you said he's, he's an old hippie. What's that song from the 60s that you always sing at camp about how people went up the mountain and they were going to steal. Um, A one tin uh, soldier? Yeah, one tin soldier. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I mean, am I the only one who's kind of thinking this? Like, they're gonna go like kill this. It's definitely this person Bruna, who yeah. only has love to share, right? Yeah, peace on Earth, as one tin sh- soldier tells us. They, they, so they arm them in the cartoon. They arm themselves with bombs made of skunks. Yeah, <laughs> beehive grenades, uh, an old cannon that blows up on Papa, and they get most of the way up the mountain, and then they they finally realize that the cubs are up there. Yep. And trapped between the army and Big Paw, who is about to topple a pile of boulders down on the bears below. So Big Paw's going to defend himself. Yeah, like he's no he's no total peacenik. He's <laughs> he's he's seen some stuff. Well, he has nowhere to go, and they're coming with you know weapons. Right. I feel I feel like he's probably been John Ramboed out of a few towns. <laughs> yeah, like he's had more than he, one more than one sheriff. Of course, walking up the mountain, like he looks so scared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you really feel sad for him. But he's going to fight back, and he's going to fight back with deadly force. And they realize that if the boulders fall, the cubs will be crushed, and the only one who can save them is Big Paw himself, which he does. And Mm -hmm. I guess the town figures if he didn't kill the kids, he's probably a good guy. And so they they let him come join the Thanksgiving feast, and that seems to teach them all a lesson. Yeah, they're and they're and they're a turnaround is immediate. Yes, <laughs> I mean in 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 like twenty seconds of the special, they go from wanting to kill him to inviting him to Thanksgiving dinner. Right, and there's no like, I, I bet there's a there has to be like a missing really awkward scene, <laughs> like once he gets down the mountain where they're like, uh, yeah, so um, you want you want to you want to join us? Like, I mean, sorry about like trying to kill you. I know we were all going to kill you. <laughs> Well, like the world was really like that, where people can just be friends after 10 seconds of seeing each other. If only. And uh, he does. He sits down. He's brought back the uh, the bucket of, of mixed nuts that the yes. guy lost, which is no longer the size of his finger. Is now a Because he's no longer 50 feet tall, he's now larger than the other bears, but he fits at the table. Right? Well, and you know, an, another telling element showing that this maybe is not in the continuity of the other books, because... We've been told in book after book after book that Papa's favorite food is honey. Yeah. But they specifically say that his favorite snack is mixed nuts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Be- yeah. Why? Yeah, this, sto- this, this tale has gone off in a different direction. Yeah. And I'm going to point out one thing that sh- tells me, and t- beyond a shadow of a doubt, that this is in its own bear universe, is that the sconces... <laughs> all the sconces <laughs> on the front of the house first of all they're not there in the beginning and then when you finally see them they look completely unlike the illustrations in the books oh, man. they are I can only speak for the television special but they are not the sconces you see on the house in any of the Berenstain's illustrations and to me wow. that's always the signal that we are dealing with another continuity here yeah. And, uh, wow. I didn't, and I should have known to look for that because I know that that you're always looking for the sconces. Always and I did not pay attention. Of course, in the book version, they've fixed it by then. Yeah. You know. Um, so that is very interesting. Now, Jerry, Great observation. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Jeremy brought up something uh, earlier, like way earlier, which was about the fact that the theme of this show, a lot of the theme is is actually. Still very relevant, mm-hmm. which is this notion of welcoming strangers into our into our communities, yeah. right? And and the herd mentality of just going after the common enemy without really knowing them, expecting especially in the Facebook age, 
<laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's it's playing out every day, whether it's you know what is happening literally this week with you know Syrian refugees, or whether it's it's the larger story of pretty much every major news story and international conflict over the past well since since forever um, that uh, we we are just suspicious of the quote unquote other. Oh, definitely. And sad to say, I'd feel that I'd I'd go ahead and say not much progress has been made since this book came out all those years ago. And it's special. Yeah. Have we learned nothing from Big Paw? Right. I know. Well, I would say that it's one of those it's one of those lessons that just has to be taught, like right. all the time, like over and over again. Like because because the person, I mean, eventually Big Paw, you know, not to give anything away, but eventually Big Paw just becomes another character in Bear Country in the mm-hmm. in the TV sh- series. Uh, he's mm-hmm. there. He's acknowledged, and uh, eventually, the the people we consider to be strangers just become part of our community, and then we get new strangers. Right, right. And I think Correct. that's a a great lesson to keep teaching children. Well, and it's and it's a lesson that they deal with um, with in the Berenstein Bears and the New Neighbors. Yep. Um, oh yeah, uh, big time. And that's actually that's a really good book. Um, I, I know you'll cover that in, in a future episode, but it, it deals with that same theme. And I think it's a, actually a really good point, like you said, Phil, that, you know, we have to keep teaching this because, you know, people are always afraid of things that are new and different. I mean, to some degree, it's human nature. Mm-hmm. Well, and I'd say this even goes further into that because the bears actually have a legend that justifies their fear. Like, it's not right. just someone shows up in town that they don't know. It's that they've been talking up how horrible this thing is for, for generations. And mm-hmm. I think that's very a very specific issue of it's not just the other arriving in town. It's the other who we have taught ourselves and our children and been taught by our parents to fear. You know, however unjustifiably, it's this ingrained fear. And that's something that's much harder to overcome, I think. Well, and it's also such a more serious or darker theme. You know, we think of most of the Berenstain Bears books as either being really just silly, lighthearted books like the original beginner books, yep. or they're these these moralistic tales that maybe there's a conflict, but it's always resolved and, and the Bear family still loves each other. Right. And the majority of this special is about conflict and about um, these feelings of anger and hate and, and warfare, and only at the very, very end is there any sort of uh, conflict resolution. And, and it really does feel like an authentic conflict resolution. It didn't feel like they were just trying to wrap it up fast. Like It seemed like, you know, this could happen. We right, could get right. to know the, the strange person and realize that they're okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah and- like, like, oops, we screwed up. Like, yeah. this person obviously isn't here to hurt us. Right. And Mama gets to be a real character. Um, mm-hmm. Her her passion and her her lessons come not from being a scold as she's traditionally portrayed. Like in you know, people tend to think of Mama as just wagging her finger. This is a life or death situation, mm-hmm. and she uses uh, she uses logic, she uses reason, she uses compassion to to get her point across. And I think, but it's Mama- also because of her that we had this whole. I mean. You know, if she hadn't been practicing witchcraft, she would have had this problem in the first place. Mama's an old soul. (laughs) Oh, it's just a shame we never got to learn more about her coven. (laughs) Maybe in future books. Oh, I somehow doubt that. I don't, yeah. None of Zonder kids. Third generation's Baron State is writing, (laughs) if that's the case, because Mike isn't going to do it. Please let us write the books. No. <laughs> yeah, once they fall out of fall into public domain, like the Oz books, you can just sort of create your own fan fiction. Yeah, this was a successful special. Uh, yep. There were three more after it, but it took a long time for this to get adapted into a book. Yeah, I don't know what took them so long because they adapted the the Christmas one immediately, right? And they spent time on that one to make it. It's a, it's a gorgeous book. It's That's beautiful. A great book. Yeah, yeah, and so it's I don't... it's the best book. I'm oh. just putting that out there. I want to I want to go on the record. <laughs> oh yeah, since since this podcast will be here for all of posterity, <laughs> the Berenstain Bears Christmas Tree is the best Berenstain Bears book. Period. Definitely in my top five as well. Absolutely, yeah, it's a gorgeous book. Um, 
I don't own the Berenstain Bears Thanksgiving. I so. think it's worth owning. I, I think from what I've seen, I, I definitely want to get my hands on it. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts on it? It's First of all, it's just, it's beautifully made. It's a large hardcover with glossy pages. The illustrations are about what you would expect from them in the late 90s. They're more simpler, more commercial looking. Yeah. But there are a few pages where it's obvious that they went back and watched the special, um, like especially the ones where they're in the woods and Big Paw appears for the first time. They oh, look yeah. a little bit, they're the full page, full color spreads that are slightly reminiscent of uh, Christmas Tree and the Bear's Almanac. Um, but I also think that they did it. They followed the story very closely. They uh, The text rhymes uh, appropriately. It's not forced. It's um, it's a nice adaptation. Interestingly enough, I have the uh, soft... I didn't know there was a hardcover. I have a, a scholastic softcover one. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I didn't even know there was a softcover. <laughs> so there you go. From Cartwheel Books. Yeah, this was my Cartwheel, yo. We don't know why, but it took him a long time to adapt it. Uh, Same with the Valentine special and Play Ball. They didn't adapt. The only one they adapted right away was the Christmas one. So could there have been, I don't know, I mean, could there have been rights issues or? Yeah, possibly. I mean, I, I, I don't know why they would they would not have the rights to convert the others into storybooks, though, if they had the first one. And they were exclusively with Random House at the time, and these all came out by Scholastic. So perhaps there was some issue with with, with copyright or, or something. Now, eventually, the Bear Scouts meet Big Paw. They do, and that's loosely the same story. But what's really funny about it is that they convert it into like some big scheme that Raffish Ralph um, like, is behind it all. It's, um, I haven't read it in a really long time, but it's, it's the same basic story of, you know, Big Paw appears and everyone is scared of him. And then the bear scouts go to investigate and, um, he climbs a mountain and the big, uh, people go up there with pitchforks, um, and, and they're all saved, but I can't remember exactly how Raffish Ralph plays into it. But of course he's, he's the real bad guy now for the for the listeners who don't know what we're talking about this is something we haven't even begun to cover yet which is uh this isn't a typical bear scout book like the little storybooks this is uh a much longer book right this is a chapter book yeah, this is, yeah, chapter, uh, chapter book. 96 pages yeah so that's something we'll be getting into later the the chapter books are a whole other ball game when and there's three series of chapter books there's the big chapter books the bear scout chapter books and the uh, the what is it? The, the light, haunted lighthouse. The, yeah, the haunted lighthouse. There's the stepping stone. I think. Stepping stones. Yeah. Yeah. Those were the worst of the group. Yes. For, yeah. for for those for those people out there listening who think this show is already going to last a very long time if we cover everything. Yeah. There's a <laughs> lot of chapter books out there. There are. So let's. Well, that's the thing. Like just to, so so everyone knows because I'm sure you have some people listening that are saying. Oh, wow, I love the Berenstain Bears when I was growing up. I mean, you know, I just hope everyone knows that there are about three or 400 Berenstain Bears books. Yeah. So get ready. <laughs> yeah. There, there's a lot more episodes to come. Yeah. So in the future, I would love to, you know, in the future, I would love to start covering the uh, the TV series that came out of the 1980s. Um, and that's where we really see Big Paw become more of a character. Like as a that that's kind of how I got to know him as as a kid was the uh, the Saturday morning cartoon where he would pop up every now and then. Yeah, for example, there's even a whole episode called the Big Paw Problem, right. and that's not based on any book and was never adapted to any book. I yeah. do want to oh, say wow. that in searching for this, I kept I kept wanting to call this the Berenstain Bears and the Legend of Big Paw because mm -hmm. that's the name of the Pound Puppies movie. Yes, I, yeah. I, that one shows up once in a while when you Google it. You end yeah, the, up with the pound puppies. <laughs> the legend of Big Paw. And I'm like, wow, there's, I guess, in as far as like anthropomorphic animal legendary goes, many species will have their 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 Big Paw character. <laughs> well, I mean, they never do address where Big Paw came from. Is he like their Aslan? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Big Paw is the one who connects all of I mean... Like the great grizzly race, maybe isn't that far uh, removed oh, right. from pound puppy world. I don't know. 
Or maybe Big Paw is the character who like travels between continuities, like Aslan travels between worlds. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. the Big Paw in the Almanac and the Big Paw in the TV show and the Big Paw in the chapter books is all the same Big Paw, even though he's operating in different continuities, which is why <laughs> he only shows up when he's needed. Anything? I would I, honestly, though, like if 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 I were like gonna go into that wardrobe, I'd rather go to Bear Country than Narnia. <laughs> you yes. So so how how great would that be if I if I went into that wardrobe someday and I ended up in Bear Country? I would never even I would not want to come back. I would stay forever. You know, <laughs> the only witch you'd have to deal with would be Mama Bear and the babysitter until you get to North Mrs. Christmas, yeah, right? until you get to North. <laughs> Is there any? Was there any like Big Paw merchandise? Not really. There was the big paw. Jeremy mentioned the activity book that came out in 1989. Uh -huh. Was that uh, the first time he showed up in a book? Was the activity book? I think so. Yeah, I think so too. But no, there was not a lot of merchandising because um, I basically got it all. I and mean, yeah. there's there's no big paw stuff, which is a shame because I probably yeah I think they I think they missed an opportunity there. Yeah, I probably I'd buy a big paw doll. Doll. Yes, what I was gonna say a big plush big paw with his guitar. <laughs> yes, yeah. please. You squeeze him, he sings a song from the 70s. <laughs> maybe, maybe he could sing One Tin Soldier for us. <laughs> I think everyone in that song dies, and then at the end, they turn over the rock. Because yeah, the treasure's they do. They, the kill, they kill it all. They all kill each other. Yeah. Uh, they could no. They kill the peaceful people up on the mountain. Right. So this is what would have happened. Okay, this is what would have happened essentially. You know, in this movie, if it had played out, or like Beauty and the Beast, or or, or whatever, is that yeah, you kill the peaceful people and to to steal their treasure. And when you lift up the rock, their treasure is just. It says peace on earth. Like that was their secret. That was the secret treasure they were guarding, which is was a peace. terrible treasure because yeah. you can just, you can find that written on a lot of things. <laughs> like you don't have to hide it under a rock. It, you can, you can go into any gift shop and find that on a t-shirt. That's, that's true. So uh, bringing this back around to Thanksgiving, it, it does, the whole story does end with a big Thanksgiving feast. Uh, they're eating yeah, the, the, the turkey and the fish and the, and the uh, the honey and the the pies and they have everything set up and just like the Christmas uh, special it, it ends with them eating because that's a big part of their lives as bears and uh, I, like you said it's not specifically Thanksgiving themed uh, it, it strays quite a bit but uh, but I think at the end of the day at the end of the at the end of the special it does have a really strong message of appreciating. Not just appreciating what you have, but welcoming people into the fold, which is kind of a, to me, a bigger Thanksgiving message than just being thankful. Right. Yeah, I absolutely. agree. So thumbs up from you guys. Oh, I love it. Two thumbs up for sure. I'm just going to put one big paw up. Yes. <laughs> one big paw. There you go. One big <laughs> paw. It is a delight. Uh, I don't believe it's still being published in any. No, but the ebook is available if anybody has like a Kindle or oh, right. an iPad. Uh, that just recently came out, actually. Oh, wow. Uh, so there is an ebook version of it available for download. Otherwise, if you go on Amazon, there's tons of copies, used copies for sale for, for super cheap. Um, is it ever released on DVD? Yes, it is on DVD as a um, a double feature along with Berenstain Bears Christmas Tree, so you can get them both on one DVD. It was also released um, in at least three VHS editions. I'm looking at th the three that I have right now. It was also released on Laserdisc. Wow. Um, so if anybody wants to go out there, that always shows up on eBay every once in a while. In fact, as of yesterday, there were one or two. So the Berenstain Bears meet Big Paw. That's what we covered today. That is our Thanksgiving special. Guys, I want to thank you so much for joining me again. Well, thank you again for inviting us. Yes. Absolutely. I love this. <laughs> yeah. I hope we can get together again soon and discuss more oddities in the Berenstain Bear universe. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And anybody out there who is looking to get a... Uh, a good Berenstain Bears Thanksgiving book. There's 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 several others if you can't put your hands on the Berenstain Bears Thanksgiving. There's the Berenstain Bears Thanksgiving All Around, Give Thanks, Thanksgiving Blessings, Harvest Festival, and Prize Pumpkin. So those are all in print still. And you guys want to uh, plug your uh, Facebook page? Absolutely. Anybody can go to Facebook and search for Berenstain Bears Collectors. Yeah, it's a great little community online. It really is a lot of fun. I love it. Yeah. Well, and 
Jeremy is the best. He he helps folks uh, uh, find things. He's he's like the number one book finder guy. Man, people will post stuff and say, "I'm looking for this," and he goes out there and finds it for them. Uh, so he's 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 awesome. He he really gets into the the spirit of the of the community. As long as they don't ask me for the same thing like twenty times, then don't know. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, uh, as far as we go, you can find this show on iTunes. Please, if you're listening, go to iTunes and rate and review us. Let us know what you think. Uh, we're at uh, BerenstainBearcast.wordpress.com. That's where the blog is. I hope to put a couple of pictures up on the blog of some things relating to Big Paw for this episode. Um, you can also email me at uh, BerenstainBearcast at gmail.com. Or you can uh, find me on Twitter. I am at Bstain Bearcast on Twitter. Shout at me. Let me know what you think. Uh, so uh, I'll talk to you guys later. You bet. Yes. Absolutely. We look forward to the next one. Great. And everyone else and everybody, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you.